Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday to you. What a joy. What a joy to look out and see these beautiful faces and see that beautiful radiant energy coming off of all of you this morning. I, uh, this week, our, our lesson is about the law of cause and effect, and some people, have, it's been referred to more recently as the law of attraction. There are different names for it, um, but I want to talk a little bit about laws, and, and as I was reading about the different laws that go on in the world, I came across some that you know you might find interesting. One is that there's a law in Birmingham, Alabama, that says that you can't drive while you're asleep. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Another great law is you can't uh, in Norman, Oklahoma, you can't drive while reading comic books. Darn. And then another one uh, in Bruton, Alabama, has a law that you can't drive a motorboat on the street. Man. <laughs> I don't know. What's wrong with these laws? I mean, come on. And there's another great law. You cannot clean your car while you're driving in Springfield, Ohio. <laughs> and another great law is that uh, you can't make whoopee and on a parked motorcycle in London. <laughs> it's a law. And then, of course, there's uh, the Sons of Murphy's Laws. You guys know about Murphy's Law, right? There's O'Reilly's Law that says, no matter what goes wrong, there's always someone who knew it would. <laughs> but um, um Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about the laws, the law. And there are a number of laws, and I was reminded in our lesson this week that, you know, uh, Jesus um, was, a, uh, was a rabbi, and a rabbi is actually a keeper of the law. In the, in, the, in the Hebrew culture during that time. But one of the things that becomes really clear what, in what Jesus was teaching was that many of the laws that were created by man are really irrelevant. Even some of the, very, uh, the, the, the religious laws of that time, he basically said that the law was written for man and not man for the law. And so what he was really trying to teach us is that there's some, there are laws and there are principles at work in the world. There are laws and principles at work in our lives. And there are laws and principles that are working whether we're conscious or aware of those laws working or not. Now, whether we are paying attention to it or not, most of us are aware that there's a law of gravity. You know, I love the bumper sticker, though, that says, you know, gravity sucks. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny, actually, when I was a teenager. <laughs> and then I started um, uh, learning. I, I went um, hand gliding one time and uh, smashed pretty hard into the ground, and I got a real sense that gravity really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're jumping out of airplanes and you don't have a parachute, gravity really sucks. <laughs> so there are laws that are always at work. And when we are aware of those laws and we can align ourselves with the working of those laws, it really creates for our life to be in a particular order and form that really enhances our well-being, that really enhances the, the life that we can experience and live. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 2, he said, Judge not that you not be judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure that you get. And so in unity, we understand what Jesus is saying here is that there's a law that whatever, now you've heard this term before, whatever you sow, as Jesus also said in the parable, what you sow is what you reap. So, you know, we've heard it put in, you know, what you put out, you get back. What goes around, comes around. Anybody have any others that, that relate to that you can think of? Every dog has his day. Every dog has his day. Okay, well, that's pretty, yeah, that's in Lima, yeah. So, <clears throat> so there's a principle that it's always at work, and we oftentimes are not conscious of it. We have a tendency to think that, that this law is... Um, is kind of, how shall I put it? We, we tend to not really be conscious of it a good bit of the time. 
because we're too busy focusing on what's going on out here. And what I mean by that is that we're too busy co focusing on the effects. And we don't really pay as much attention to what are the causes of those effects. As I was looking and kind of researching for the lesson today, I also, you know, there's a, there's a way of writing particular essays that, I, that they call a cause and effect essay. And they are uh, titles like, you know, how uh, divorce impacts uh, the educational process of children in certain areas. Or, you know, how uh, taking certain uh, supplements can enhance certain healing functions. Those are called cause and effect essays, right? So they're showing an impact in some way. And those are, those are um, practices and awarenesses of the law, and th that awareness of the law is really about how one experience is affecting another experience, or one circumstance, you might say, is affecting another circumstance. But in unity, we understand that there are, there's an understanding beyond the law of circumstance and circumstance. And that the law of cause and effect really is a more spiritual practice and a more spiritual principle, and that the causes are ultimately on a spiritual, mental, emotional level. And that ultimately, in unity, we, we have an understanding that ultimately all causes are really on a spiritual, mental, and emotional level. Now, we have experiences that come to us. Uh, let me share with you the story from the, the quest. Uh, in, in the late 1800s, an important member of the British Parliament was hurrying through a rainstorm and the fog in, in the Scottish countryside, and he was to deliver a very crucial uh, message uh, and a cru crucial talk. And he was actually, uh, his carriage was forced off the road and the wheels got stuck in the carriage. And so he was stuck there and they tried and tried to get him out, get the carriage out, and even this, this very important British parliamentarian was out there in the mud himself trying to get this thing out uh, of the mud so he could get to Parliament to deliver this very important message. Well, a young farm boy comes by and he's got a team of horses and he offers to pull the carriage out and he pulls the carriage out and the parliamentarian offered to pay him and he said, no, sir, that's, that's fine. I, I'm, he said, well, is there anything that, he said, what, what, would, what would you like to do or what would you like to be when you grow up? And the young man said, I'd like to be a doctor. And so this parliamentarian basically set up a fund to send this young man through, through medical school and he wound up going through medical school. And as he went through medical school, he grew up, and some years later, he uh, actually 50 years later, Winston Churchill became dangerously ill. He had pneumonia, and he was in uh, Morocco at the time, and his life was saved by a particular drug that was developed called penicillin. And penicillin was developed by a Scottish-born physician named Sir Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming was that young farm boy that pulled his father out of, the, out of the mud. So this is a story about causes and effects. And it's an understanding that whatever we sow is reaped in some way, in some form. Now, the interesting thing to understand about the law of cause and effect is this. You don't always reap exactly where you sow. But you always re reap in the nature and the quality of what you sow. And the sowing really has to do more, not as much, uh, more, uh, uh, let me see how I want to say this. The sowing really has more to do with the thoughts and the feelings and the beliefs and the emotions and the energy that you hold as it is for any particular action that you take. So there is a, a reaping whenever you, when you take some action. There's going to be some result of that. 
there's an effect. There's a ripple effect, and it, that ripple goes out. But the interesting thing about the law is it's kind of like, have you ever been out on a pond and tossed a, a, a rock into the pond? Have you noticed that there's a circle that ripples out? But once that circle reaches the edge of the pond, what happens? The ripples come back. And I believe that's how it works with our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions, and our energies, and our belief systems. That whatever we put out there into the universe is what's really going to come back to us in some form, in some way. Now, it doesn't always come back in the same form, in the same way that we put it out there. But it comes at back in the same energy and vibration and quality that we put out. But I think we can have a significant effect on whatever is going on out here in the world around us, but we really don't change what already has been created. In a very real sense, we have a tendency to try and look at what's been going on, what's, what, what the circumstances of life, and we push against whatever those circumstances are, thinking that we're going to somehow change the circumstances. And I'm going to suggest to you that the circumstances that you see and experience have already been created. And you're not going to change them. They are what they are. It is what it is. But you can make a choice and make a decision to change what the next circumstance will be. You follow what I'm saying? We get really caught up in trying to make the current circumstance not be the way it is. When there's something painful, when something uncomfortable, when there's something that we don't prefer or we don't want in life, <clears throat> and the very act of trying to resist that, that experience of what is, is in the process of creating what the next what is, is. <laughs> you follow me? may not be correct English, but I think you get what I'm saying. <laughs> And so, so part of what we're learning with working with these principles is to recognize that in any given moment, we have a choice. And the choice is not about what's out there already happening. The choice is about how we are going to allow whatever energy is going on inside of us to either continue or to shift. So... For example, you know, you, you're driving down the street and someone cuts in front of you. Anybody ever have that experience? Does it, does it really, you know, did, what's your first response to that usually? <laughs> you don't want to know? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest to you that your response to that has less to do with the fact that someone pulled in front of you as it does with what you have been programmed and taught and conditioned to respond to circumstances like that. So in a very real sense, the person pulling in front of you is a very impersonal act. Now, it may be somebody you know that's really out to get you. That's possible. Or someone that you're racing with that's really determined that they're going to get in front of you and win. That's a little different dynamic, isn't it? Or it could be just someone who is really totally unaware that they pulled in front of you. But if our response and our reaction is, is not to what actually happened, it is in response to a particular set of programmings and patterns that we have developed over our lifetime, perhaps in other lifetimes, that says this is how you respond in those circumstances and situations. And that programming has been developed with the idea that it's there to try and keep you safe, right? But I'm going to suggest to you it is a, a, a reaction to a particular circumstance, but it really is not dependent upon the circumstance. And you can have a different decision and reaction to it. Now, when you sow that kind of energy, guess what? You're putting out an energy and a vibration. You're putting out a thought system. You're putting out a belief and, and, a, and an energy that is going to according to how the law of attraction works, it's going to draw to you other circumstances and situations like that. And you think, well, wait a minute, why? I don't want that. That's not what I really want. 
But the law of attraction doesn't necessarily bring you what you really want, but it brings you what you put out. And you can say all day, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that. And what the universe hears is, give me more, give me more, give me more. And it's, it's about being able to show you where you have the energy and the programming. And it's for the purpose of helping you change that energy and the programming. So we keep creating these experiences in our lives, and it's kind of like a circle. We keep coming back to the same kind of experiences over and over again, maybe at a little different level, a little different vibration, a little different energy, a little different perception. <clears throat> but we're still coming back to the same experiences because there's something in our consciousness that's sowing energies that are there to bring to us those things that will show us the energy that we're sowing so that we can make a choice and we can change. And we can change the energy that's going out. And now, one of the things I'm really loving about the work that I'm doing on Wednesday in the class is a, a great awareness that what you change <laughs> is not what goes on out here. What you change is the energy that you hold about your own reactions to it. What we have a tendency to do is we have these reactions and then we say, oh, well, I shouldn't think that way and I don't want to think that way. I don't want to feel that way. I don't like that. It's uncomfortable. And then we resist the reaction. We resist the programming. And so we push back on the energy and the programming that's inside of us. We've, we push back on how we've been triggered. Or we try to cover it up. Or we try to make ourselves, we soothe ourselves in some way, not, not so that we don't feel the discomfort of that. And what I'm learning in this particular work that's really powerful is he teaches that what you want to do is rather than trying to hide from whatever your response or reaction you have is just send to love to that part of yourself because that's a whole new level of sowing. You're, you're sowing a different seed. And as you sow a different seed, it actually changes the energy of that reaction. And in a very real sense, you are, you are reprogramming your subconscious mind with a different energy. You're planting a different seed. And so instead of trying to make something out here go away, by sending love to whatever it is, you're sowing a different seed. And so in a very real sense, it's a whole new cause creating a whole new effect. So you're not going to change what is, but you can change what will be next. Make sense? Now, there's a real powerful understanding. There's a really great work to help you to, if you really want to get some proof that this stuff works, that our thoughts and our thinking really does change not only what is uh, ourselves, but it cha can change what comes up next. And uh, uh, the, the name of the book is E Squared. Anybody familiar with that book? We taught a class on it not long ago, and I know Bill is, and I'm going to share it if your story if you don't mind, Bill. One of the, uh, it's nine experiments that prove that our thoughts create our experiences. And one of the experiments is that you take seeds, and I forgot what kind of seeds they were, Bill. Bean seeds. Bean seeds. And you plant, I think, three of them in one set, and then three of them in another set, and three of them in another set. And as you plant those on one set, you, every day, you take time to send love and appreciation and say wonderful things, you know, and put out good energy. And then the next set, you're neutral. You don't really do much of anything. And then the third one, you say things like, I hate you, you're awful, you're stupid, you know, all kinds of things like that. Yeah, I know. And Bill, tell us your results. Tell us, go ahead. Well, after about three days, the, the seeds that you planted with love and when you watered them, you watered them with love, were about that tall. They were about like that. And the, the middle ones were less tall, and the other ones hadn't even popped up yet in three days. Everything else was the same. They came from the same package. They were planted in the same dirt. They were sitting in the same sunlight and watered with the same water. And it was a definite change. And after a week, there were the ones that you loved like that. about that tall. And, and you didn't, you didn't, uh, you, you, you said something every day 
to to them, and and it and you said the same. You kept the same thoughts with each group. So get that. The ones that he sent love and watered and, and was really positive with grew significantly after a few weeks. The ones in the middle were just kind of medium, but the ones he sent negative energy to didn't grow at all. Not at all. I you, couldn't believe there was that much power in my thoughts. I'm going to suggest to you that's that much power in all of our thoughts. Yeah, I had to say but I want to suggest to you that it's not just our thoughts. So I don't want to mislead you here because it's important to understand <clears throat> that our thoughts create our emotions. Our thoughts and our emotions create our attitudes and our beliefs. Our thoughts, our attitudes, and our beliefs create a, an energy and a vibration and a consciousness, as we call it in unity. And it is all of that, the consciousness, that actually is what's affecting what's going on out here in the world. But it's not affecting what is, it's affecting what is becoming. And, you know, it's been called the law of attraction, it's been called the law of cause and effect. Emerson called it the law of compensation. And it really has to do with whatever you're putting out, there's a compensation for whatever you put out, that it comes back to us in some form, in some way. And so <clears throat> those, that consciousness is putting out an energy and a vibration that is creating circumstances and situations in the future. But more than that, it immediately is creating experiences. And so our, our control really is not so much over what is as our control is over what our experience of what is, is. <laughs> and so when we begin to make decisions about what's happening in our life, with a way of not resisting what is, but finding an opportunity and an energy to see uh, the good, as we say in unity, to see the possibility or to see something new or different, and to hold an energy of that experience, then we are participating in what is called the law of creation. We are co-creators with the divine, and we're doing that whether we're conscious of it or not. And so part of the work that we're learning here is to learn how to be more conscious of the energy that we're holding. In unity, we have a saying, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Well, I'm going to suggest to you that it's a little more than thoughts. It's our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our, our attitudes, our beliefs that we hold are what are actually helping to shape and form what is brought into our experiences. And the powerful thing is that when we come together, Jesus said, when two or more are gathered together in my name, name actually metaphysically means in my nature or in my character, in my consciousness, you might say. When two or more come together in a, a like consciousness with Jesus the Christ, there is a power that works through that. And that's why there's a great power in combined prayer, when two or more come together to pray for a particular circumstance or outcome. I suspect everyone in this room has had some awareness or some experience of this law at work in their lives, whether they are consciously aware of it or perhaps peripherally aware of it. So one of the things we want to think about this week is not so much how can I change what's going on in my life or in the world, but how can I change the energy that I'm holding about that so that I am participating in something different and something new. Now another valuable part of understanding this law of cause and effect, this law of, of attraction, this law of creation, is as, as the Abraham Hicks work talks about it just beautifully. Let me, let me find my spot here. One of the things that they talk about is, to, is for us to reach for the best feeling thought that you have access to. I love the way they describe that. Reach for the best feeling thought that you have access to. So you have a particular circumstance or situation, and what I have a tendency to do is to react to that circumstance or situation with all kinds of energies that don't really produce what we want to create, right? 
And so they say choosing a different thought will always produce a different emotional response. So you could say, I will deliberately choose my thoughts so that I can feel better. And that would be a good decision for you to make. An even better decision and really an, a, an easier one to make is, I want to feel good. So I will try to feel good by choosing a thought that does feel good. And it is your decision to follow your bliss. So what would be this, you might find, ask the question in a particular circumstance or situation, what would be the best feeling I could have about this? And what would help me to have a better feeling? And what would be the thoughts and the way I could think about this that helped me to feel better about myself, about the part of me that wants to react to this and say, this ain't it awful and, you know, poor me and, or you so-and-so, or you, you follow the thoughts that, the ones that don't really work for us. And if you can just send some energy of love to those parts of ourselves, you'll be amazed how it'll begin to shift and new insights, new feelings, new awarenesses begin to, to, to develop. And then as a result of that, you will begin to shape and form new understandings and new experiences in life. And you will begin to change what is happening in the future. Louise Hay says, now is the moment of power. Right now. And so just notice, what's the energy I'm holding right now? Because that's the energy that I'm participating in creating. And so when someone cuts you off, in the freeway, what's the energy you're holding about that right now? When someone does something that you don't like, anybody have any of that kind of experience? What's the energy that you're holding about that? Because I can assure you, the energy that you hold about resisting what it is that you don't like is going to create more of those experiences of what you don't like because it's there to help you let go of how you are responding to it and give you an opportunity to make a new choice. So that's kind of our homework for this week is really just being mindful. Being mindful. What's in this, I love this saying from Eric Butterworth, looking at a circumstance or situation, ask yourself the question, what's in this from me? What's in this from me? And then just listen to whatever it is you are actually sending out. And just ask if that's what you want to continue to get back. How's that for homework? All right, let's move into our meditation time. Something that I didn't do Something that I need to know Something that I need to write You were tapping in the night time You were tapping all day long Maybe you just want to hear a sweet song Do you want to hear I sing again Ooh, yeah 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 you were tapping on my heart tell me what is the plan how can I heal my mind? Tell me how to walk this land. You were tapping in the night time. You were tapping all day long. Oh, 
Maybe we're the song of freedom. Am I the voice of so many men and women and children who love one another? All the men and women and children who sing for the dying, the men, the women, the children who care for our people, sing for our people, oh, tapping all day long, ooh, tapping, tapping on my heart, tapping, tapping on my soul, ooh. So gently breathe in and out. Let yourself move into that place of quiet and stillness. Move into a place where you're able to really tune into your own thoughts and feelings and emotions. And just notice if there's a thought of some experience that is Come into your awareness that you're noticing or feeling some resistance to. Some current circumstance or situation in life that you're feeling challenged by. And just notice the energy that you have about that. Notice how you're feeling it and where you're feeling it, even in your physical body. Where does it show up for you? And it will usually show up as some sense of constriction or tightness or... And just notice that and see if you can take a moment and send an energy, a thought of love and appreciation into that area. As you slowly breathe in and out, Maybe just even thank that part of you that's trying to protect you and take care of you in some way. But just be open to releasing that energy with an energy of love. And just love the one in you that's being challenged. It's like it's a young child that it's just not sure how to deal with a circumstance or situation. See and hold that young child in your heart. And let it know and feel the energy of love from you. And just give a reassuring thought of power, of peace of strength, of courage. And just say to that part of you, it's okay. I love you. You're going to get through this. You don't need to know how right now. Just know it's okay. Let yourself feel the safety, the assurance comfort that all is well. All is well. And holding that energy of well-being, let that energy of well-being expand in your heart. Feel it growing. Feel that energy of well-being radiating, radiating outward. And let that energy and feeling of well-being radiate to whatever the circumstance or situation you had in mind. And just let that feeling of well-being permeate that whole circumstance. And 
and let your awareness that there's only one presence and one power in that circumstance come to mind. And where God is, the divine is, all is well. Breathe into that feeling, that knowing. All is well. And know that you're planting new seeds, new possibilities, new energies, and new light. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Blessed Spirit. All is well. Take a nice deep breath now. Let that energy and feeling of well-being rise up. Let your eyes come gently open. Take another nice deep breath and be present here and now in the knowing of that well-being. And know that your heart is at the center of helping to create that in your future. And so it is.